All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here, and I am flying over the historical battle map Peleliu in a P-51D-20NA, one of the uh, new aircraft that the Americans are getting, and you can see it uh, profiled here. Now, take a note of that gun sight. I'm not a P-51 pilot. This is, uh, fortunately, the, the press account. I have not unlocked the P-51 personally, so I've not gotten to fly one. Um, I am rather close, so I cannot wait for that. But I believe that the D20NA might have a different gun sight than the other P51. But um, from what I understand, that's the K14 gun sight, and uh, it was designed to help pilots score more hits, and it was better in higher deflection angle attacks. Um, the NA stands for where the P51 was produced. P-51s were primarily produced in Inglewood or in Dallas, and the NA refers to Inglewood. Um, whereas if you saw an NT, that would refer to Dallas. Uh, also, a few of them were produced in Australia, I believe. So if we ever got to see a Commonwealth tech tree within the uh, British tech tree, you might see a Aussie P-51D at, at some point. So what you can see right here as I'm swooping in on these uh, mighty KI-10s. And about that, I was the only player, uh, uh, human-controlled player in this game. The dev server didn't have that wide of a player base. Most people would jump on, see the new planes, or look for some improvements, and maybe fly around a few. But as I was going for historical battles, they were you know, uh, less targeted than arcade battles were at this time. So I'm the only player within this game and that allowed me a good view of the map without fear of getting shot down as well as some uh, just some good silver line hunting right here and being able to shoot down KI-10s and landing craft. So here you can see in the background the airfield A and that is over uh, Peleliu Island. Now in Arcade you have two airfields on different islands. This big island is Peleliu, and the smaller island is uh, Nesibus, I believe it's pronounced. And uh, how it works in historical battle is kind of like Lonely Island or Wake Island in arcade mode. Hey there. And uh, where whereby both fleets launch a number of landing craft, and they will attempt to get to the beaches where they will launch off uh, tanks in the AI controlled ground vehicles are the ones that capture the airfield so you want to protect your landing craft while at the same time shooting down the enemy's landing craft because they're much easier to kill the landing craft than it is to kill the uh, you know the light medium tanks that would come about but um Historically, that's not how the Battle of Peleliu actually happened, whereas from a gameplay standpoint, this, uh, this, it's basically each team is mirrored. The only thing that really isn't mirrored, and, I'm, and that would, it would only offset things very slightly in terms of balance, is the terrain. As you can see, some beaches may be closer. I'm not really sure how Gaijin's doing that, but basically it's a, a rather well-balanced map. Whereas historically, um, the Japanese held the island and they had no supporting fleet and the Americans had a rather large fleet that was bombing and shelling uh, the living crap out of this island in order to try to kill as many of the Japanese defenders as they could. And uh, it's pretty impressive. The A little historical background. Um, Given how big the Pacific Ocean was, the Pacific Campaign regarded primarily around what the Americans called island hopping, which was basically exterminating all of these Japanese garrison that were guarding various airfields that they used because airfields were very, very important. That's why a small little island like this was, uh, you know, in other islands like Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, stuff like that, Wake, were such focal points in the Pacific Campaign was because both nations needed these for to uh, put 
air airfields on in order, you know, in the Japanese case to kind of defend the home islands. And in the Americans case, they wanted to capture these islands so that they could use them as bombing bases. With their long range heavy bombers, the closer they got, the closer, you know, the sooner they could bomb Japan from ground based heavy bombers, which could not take off from aircraft carriers. And that was what they were really going for. So something, uh, a couple facts interesting about Peleliu historically was that um, it was just the U.S. Marine Corps Major General said that, hey, we're going to take this island in three or four days. And the Japanese were like, screw you, bro. And they held off for two months, two plus months. And uh, it was it was pretty impressive the uh, the amount of ordnance that the Americans put on the island prior to landing on it, and the there was artillery barrages from ships and strafing and bombing attacks from uh, aircraft. The Americans had six battleships, four heavy cruisers, and three light cruisers all shelling this island. They also had three fleet carriers and five light carriers and their associated aircraft, which they used to bomb the island. So there was two million plus 16 and 14 inch shells that were sh lobbed on this small island, which you can see in a pretty good view right now. So imagine that many shells dropping. And on top of that, that was only 16 in inch and 14 inch shells. They didn't even, you know, count how much six inch shells and smaller shells and then the 37 and you know I guess 37 or 47 millimeter shells that the uh, the landing craft would be using but um and then the aircraft from the carriers there was uh let's see over 1.7 million pounds of bombs and 17,000 plus 50 caliber machine gun rounds used in strafing attacks on this island. And despite all of that, it wasn't very effective enough to uh, kill as many Japanese defenders as they had hoped. And um, so they had to land and they thought they destroyed, you know, a lot of the defenders and they did not. And the Japanese held out, and this was actually this battle, the Battle of Peleliu, or modern-day Palau, was the highest U U.S. casualty rate of any battle in the Pacific War, which is pretty crazy to think about. And uh, of the American attackers, there were over, or there were eight Medal of Honor recipients, and I believe that five of them were awarded this posthumously, meaning they fell in combat. And uh, the Japanese, so, but the Americans, they, it said it was the, uh, I guess, highest U.S. casualty rate, which considers both dead and wounded. Um, and they had, I think, uh, 17, like 1,794 killed in action, uh, or killed. And then 8,010 wounded or missing in action. And that was the highest U.S. casualty rate of any battle. Yet, the Japanese defenders lost 10,600 uh, plus killed and only 202 captured. So, pretty, pretty insane. So while this historical battle isn't necessarily historically accurate, it's a uh, kind of a good bit of uh, it's a good and well balanced map so each team is kind of at the the same position same chances of winning so while I was going against AI controlled KI 10s uh, I was able to shoot down a good five of them and I was able to hit 10 ground targets and that racked in a lot of uh, silver lions as you are about to see here and I was like, oh man, 97,000. And then it went up. And I was like, good lord, 134,000 silver lines. So pretty excited about that. 
So I'm Baron, and that was the P51D20A over the new historical battle map Peleliu. And it is a balanced map, so it should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to the Pacific maps in historical battles once 1.31 is launched. So I'm Baron, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. The XP50 twin engine attacker. He has two 20 millimeter cannons and two 50 millimeter M2 Browning machine guns. Um, that should be fun to play. But this, this is what I'm excited about. The XP55 Ascender. It's an attacker. It has a prop on the uh, the back. It is a pusher. Um, two 20 millimeter guns and four 50 cal Browning machine guns. Uh, this thing is pretty beastly. Um, only 430 kilometers per hour max speed. Now we'll compare that to the P51. 